Welcome to my YouTube channel. You are in for a treat today. We are doing an amazing, an amazing transformation on my friend Leanne. She had yellow, very demarcated highlights that were feeling brassy. And so today we're doing a color correction all on how to do bright blonde, beautiful highlights and lowlights with clay lightener. Let's get to it. We're gonna have a blast. All right, here's a little sneaky sneak of the final look. I don't want to give it all away, but make sure you hit that subscribe and that bell so that you can get notified about upcoming videos. Okay, so highlights and lowlights, open air. I always get so many questions about separation. You can see here I'm already applying the lowlight. I'm using Redken Shades EQ. I'll tell you the formula here in a second, but I'm using a wide tooth comb to comb it through and I'm actually pulling it all the way through to the ends on that piece because I'm still around that occipital bone. Now you can see my perfing, my perfings, my sections aren't perfect because I go with the way the hair falls and flows. Our hair is a movable piece of art. Therefore, I work with the cowlicks and the movement. Now here I'm showing you, I'm using Redken Freehand, which is being discontinued, which breaks my heart. I also love Oligo Clay Lightener I'm using 40 Vol because 40 Vol in open air is like 20 in a foil. There I'm using 6N in Shades EQ for the low light. What I'm doing is really covering up a lot of that blorange and bringing down her natural a little bit. So it's not so much a low light to create darker hair, but to cancel out that blorange and that demarcation line, which you'll see later on in the video, I show you how to blend out the demarcation line that has the most beautiful result. So here you can see I'm taking my triangle shaped sections. If you've watched any of my other videos before, you know I like taking triangle inspired sections to give that pop and that flow of natural looking hair. If you just take slices like you would with foils, you get really stacked results. So if you haven't watched any of my other videos, I really suggest after this one binging some of my other balayage videos. So here I'm taking a low light, I'm taking my Shades EQ bottle, squirting it on, and then I squish it through with my hand there and I use a wide tooth comb. Why do I use a wide tooth comb? Because sometimes I don't pull it all the way through the ends and I want it to blend out. And I find 6N and above, you can still create that look of blending. Anything below a 6N can start to look splotchy or not really blend. There you can see I'm taking some lightener to blend out the ends just to tip it so that she gets that brightness and I don't have any of that blue orange taking time to always wipe my hands between sections. I'm really getting talking fast this time. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos with voiceovers, you know I can talk really fast sometimes when I get excited and I also go off on tangents. So again, making sure I wanna keep her all over light. And what I see happen sometimes with hairstylists is they get so much into the color correction of like canceling out colors that they forget about the overall look. And the last thing I wanna do is to make sure I cover up all the color and correct everything, but end up with a blah look. So I'm making sure I'm putting more highlights than I am low lights because I want her to have an overall look. And like I said, if I put one to one highlight low light, although technically would be really sound and really good, it would kind of end up in this in between color. Does that make sense? Like my analogy of salt and pepper is like if you have equal parts salt and pepper and you mix it together, it doesn't look really bright. It doesn't look really dark. It kind of looks like bleh. But if you make sure you put density in it and you also have more salt or just denser pieces of the salt, if this analogy, you'll see it pop more. So once again, I'm blending out that demarcation line that was in her hair from, from foils using that wide to the comb. I love this Framar comb. It's got a, co a brush on one side and a comb on the other. I forget what it's called, but it is my favorite favorite comb from Framar. And you see, I didn't pull it all the way through to the ends. I'm just blending out the demarcation line. And some of that blorange is okay, as I call it a supporting actress role. It's not the lead role. The bright blonde highlights are gonna steal the show. And some of that blorange in there is okay, just as a supporting role. It's not gonna be what's noticeable. Currently, when she came in, that's what your eye was drawn to. You were seeing all the blorange. And so a lot of times people overcorrect to do color corrections. I'm here to show you how simple a color correction can be when you make sure that some you can leave a little bit of what they've got blending it out and it actually works really well as like a behind the scenes kind of color I hope that makes sense if I'm not making any sense or if you've got questions please leave them in the comments below I make these videos for you so you can learn and grow as a stylist and take the complication and the stress out of doing your job so here I'm working once again not perfect partings this is not this is intentional I'm working with how her cowlicks work because her hair is gonna bend the way it's gonna bend it's gonna grow out of the follicle the way it grows as we've learned so why not work with it instead of having like putting this highlight in there that it, the hair doesn't actually fall that way and have like a springy weird highlight so I'm working with the cowlicks 
italics. Now, hairstylists that really like to follow regimented rules and like to have perfect partings really struggle with this technique. And I get it. And I'm not saying you have to agree with it or you even have to do it the way I do it. But the results that this yields, the natural looking color that's obviously been colored, but my clients, the wearability, the time they get between their appointments, their willingness to pay more and more of a premium price because they're getting something that lasts and looks good from all angles and every which way they wear their hair that's huge a lot of times i see people producing results for a look only to wear it down but then there's a skunk stripe when they lift it up or it looks like this when they put it half up i really go for the all-around look of the hair all right so you can see i'm creating that blend angling it down if you've got questions once again binge some of my other videos after you watch this one to learn about sectioning to learn about um, blending all sorts of stuff but once again working in a uv shaped pattern in the back bouncing from side to side so that i can create that rooted look because there's a really big difference between rooted look and roots and in the beginning when i started doing this look i couldn't figure it out i kept giving people hair that looked like it was colored six months ago <laughs> and that's not what we want so once again taking sections kind of going perpendicular each time bouncing off of each other making sure the hair is out of the way blending it out using the flat side of my brush making sure i use the product from the back of my hand making sure with the clay lightener that it is flat on the flat side of the brush there's no big globs i'm patting it on almost like a clapping motion and it's only the top there and so i'm only doing surface painting it's not fully saturating that whole section and creating that blend so that i won't have to shadow root her at all this is such a quick color correction technique that you can get your client in and out in under two two and a half hours tops and so you can see here taking that triangle shape section putting on my low light moving it with my thumb gliding it through and pulling it down over the demarcation line getting my comb wide tooth why because the wide tooth actually helps separate the color and drag it down a little bit a, a fine tooth comb will just pull it off the hair and it'll actually make more skid or jump marks if you've ever seen that happen shades eq is really forgivable and like i said six n and above is the only time i will kind of drag it through to create that blend anything darker than a six n in shades eq and you can't really create that illusion of blend with the low light so here i am taking this isn't a low light but this is covering up the demarcation line because I wanted the highlight to be a little bit lower than where the previous highlights were. So I just took that low light, covered up the demarcation line, pulled it down a little bit, and now I'm putting the highlight because I wanted to brighten up that blue orange. It wasn't quite bright enough, but I wanted the low light to sit lower than the previous, or the highlight, sorry. Blah, blah, blah. I wanted to get rid of the blue orange and brighten it up a little bit, but I wanted the highlight to sit lower than where the current highlight was. So that's why I just took a little bit of that low light color, which is 6N, which is around the natural color that her hair is, and just blended out that demarcation line. And once again, you see, as I go towards the crown of the hair, I start bringing the highlights lower to create that rooted look. The thing I see a lot of hairstylists do is they create lower from the bottom up. But as you've noticed, my highlights underneath the crown were up higher because we base a root, the difference between roots and a rooted look is a rooted look is based off of the top of the head. So anything below, any section below the crown can be brought up quite close to the root because it still looks like it's coming off the top of the head. But what I see hairstylists do is they put those pieces lower down, low down too, and it creates this uniform like every every highlights like six inches from the scalp and it doesn't look rooted i hope that makes sense once again if that doesn't make sense ask questions in the comments and i'm happy to um, help more so here i'm coming to the side and i'm wanting to make sure that i angle towards the front of the ear putting that low light in because this is where the sun would never hit the hair so even though i want hair to look like it's been colored and i want it to have a high impact i still want it to have a natural feel to it i'm a very much of a natural hairstylist when it comes to color and so creating that internal depth where a highlight would never actually happen on its own we can exaggerate a little bit with color but still have it looking believable and in not out of place so here i'm taking the next section and this is where the masks start to get a little bit tricky um, you can see here i start to part it and the mask is in the way. And here's this fun little trick that I wish I could credit. I know who to credit it to, but I saw it on Instagram. You twist it 
again there my pot in the background is so in focus and her ear is not but you can see what I'm trying to get at I'm still learning this camera thank you guys so much for your patience I'm still really new to YouTube and so um, I love the feedback from you guys and I recognize that here the poofs are in focus and her hair is not but we can still see we can still see what I'm doing right are you guys still can you give me a thumbs up for this video for for trying the best the hardest thing I've learned is you just got to get going and trying and learn as you go and now I will know for next time to double check the focus on my camera so once again, if her hair was pulled up in a ponytail, the sun would hit it here. So you'd see that really bright blonde around the face, which is really, really nice. So going here and creating a natural flow when she puts her hair up, this is gonna create a natural look to her color. So making sure the hairline's nice and bright. When I work internally, I can create more depth. So kind of having this like pinpoint at the top crown of her head works as a circle so as you work outward from that place you can get closer to the root so the hairline is like right up to the root and as you work in it drops down in a circular fashion so here you can see I'm blending that um, low light with my fingers and then I take the comb to make sure it gets all the way through and I gently guide glide my fingers over it but be really careful with the ends because we are trying to create that blend now it's never going to create the same blend that we can create with the clay lightener. The clay lightener is has that, that consistency and that ability to create that hard shell. But you can see I'm not scared of putting that low light on top of the previous highlights gently because that creates the, the clay lightener creates the, um, the hard shell. So it shouldn't uh, and, and won't pass on. I've had moments where it's kind of like, you know, I see a little splotch here or there and then I just tweak it with a little lightener. The lightener is really forgiving and so is Shades EQ. But you will see later on, I do separate as I get higher up around the face, do separate with some Framar foils because they're the best, of course, and I love them and they look cute. So really working in that hairline, lots of times people forget about the second hairline, the hidden hairline, I call it, and it's that recession area. And so I make sure the part goes into that recession area because that those hairs would get highlighted by the sun as well. So going in and making sure I get that taking, I call this my angle parking placement because I kind of work on an angle off the part and making sure you can see those strong demarcation lines hokey dino i don't know hokey dino is that like that's my my small town roots coming out <laughs> um but i'm blending the demarcation line right there and making sure i'm still wanting this to be a highlight but wanting to get rid of creating more depth so that she doesn't have that solid line and the highlight over top so this is how i do color corrections with clay lightener and i really love it because I can get that beautiful balayage look, which you had a sneak peek, but you're gonna wanna stick around and see the final look because, oh my goodness, there's so much better um, videos and angles to show you at the end here. But you just can't create this with, recreate this with foils. Now, of course, there's things foils do that, that this can't do, but the look that we are going for, and of course, of course, of course, I had a consultation with Leanne Really, consultations are one of the most overlooked skills in our industry, and if you've been around me long enough, you know I'm super passionate about communication because you can have all the skill and talent in the world, in the world, but if you don't understand your client, your under client doesn't understand you, you can give them hair that's amazing, but they don't think so or they don't love. So a little bit more about that later, but really as we get up into this front piece, and as you can see, I'm bringing this low light down to cover up some of that orange. the communication piece is so important, especially like every single client, no matter how long you've seen them, you should be consulting with your long-term clients. The amount of clients that end up going new places and that I've seen, and I'm sure I've lost as well, let's be honest, it's when we get in a rut and we think that we know them so we don't ask questions anymore. So make sure you're consulting with every client, especially when it comes to every day, but also with um, color corrections like I'm doing here. Now you can see I'm popping that frame our neon switch foil there because now as I get higher, these are gonna start getting a little bit closer and it doesn't lay off, fall off the head the same way because the curve of the head, right? Now it's kind of laying on top of the head. So I'm just, I'm not really incubating it for heat for any purposes, just to keep it out of the way so that low light doesn't transfer onto the highlight and vice versa. And this is where I get really particular because the front of the hair, this is what I see happen to stylists. They get really into everything. They're working on the back, they're working on their color correction, they're making sure everything's covered and all of a sudden they realize they've taken more time than they should and they have to rush the front. And and the front is where your client sees. So I don't, I'm not pro rushing. I think we need to learn to speed up. Like getting my speed up was huge when I first came out of school. It was like you got everyone in and out in under two hours, maybe two and a half. I know things take longer now, but I do think that stylists do need to work on their timing more and more. And so 
working on your timing, having goals. I always like to know like how long is this going to take me to apply? How, where should I be done? What section should I be done at 15 minutes in at half an hour? And I keep an eye on the clock always. And I want to make sure if I'm going to rush anything, I'm going to rush the back where they don't, like I said, I'm not promoting rushing. Don't get me wrong here. But the last thing I want to do is rush the front where they're going to look at it every day and see themselves. So this is a really important piece you can see happening here. And before I go really in depth about this piece, I just want to take a quick break here and talk to you about something else. Now, before I went into starting Leanne's hair, of course I sat down and did a custom consultation because consultations are so much more than what would you like done with your hair. It's about building trust, respect, loyalty, and authority. So if you're not sure if you're doing custom consultations, you might be missing out on some big things in your business. So I won't ramble on, but go ahead and scroll down, look at the description, check out my Rock Your Consultation program. It is a game changer. All right, back to this important piece. I don't want you to miss this because this is the part where people, like I said, miss out on the front. So I want to make sure she has a bright pop around her face. So that angle parking placement, as you can see, does it make sense, the angle parking? Because like the part is the curb and the parting is the angle parking. And you can see I'm going in with some depth here and I'm wanting to make sure adjust my camera. Let's just keep it real here. Going in and I want to make sure that I create some depth so that that bright money piece around the front has some pop. So you can see I zigzag my color on there. I blend it with my fingers and I am going to go through with a comb, but I'm being careful because I don't want to get the ends dark. I just want to create some depth and dimension next to it, but I still want to have her ends bright and popping like it was affected by the sun. So wide tooth comb, gently combing it through, getting the Framar switch foil in there for some fun, gently laying it on, getting it stuck on there, wiping off my gloves as you do super important when doing color corrections that you wipe off your gloves laying a foil on top so that I can get this next piece nice and bright so you're gonna see here I'm gonna split this in two because her part might change from day to day and I want to have max brightness so I'm actually gonna go triangle shape section there you can see getting the product on the back of my hand laying it flat on the flat side of my brush this way I'm gonna create nice bright pop Getting that hairline, remember consistently, if you haven't watched my videos, other videos about the money piece, you're gonna wanna go binge those after this as well to see how to do the money piece around the hairline. Getting it nice and bright, getting it so that if she flips her hair every which way, you can see how I'm going internally, not just the hairline. So if her hair falls forward, we're gonna see that bright pop. I take the money piece section here, a little bit smaller sections, so that it creates more density. Once again, that, that salt and pepper analogy, the more density a color is, the less it's gonna blend in with the other color. So I want to make sure the highlights are nice and dense around the face. So here we go, taking this section, applying it right on the part and on the front, making sure it has nice bright pop. You're going to love this. Like pay attention to this piece when you're watching her after video shot because it is so beautiful, the seamlessness and legit. I didn't have to shadow root. The blend is created with the product. I'm creating the blend with it. I'm bringing that. It's all just one toner. It grows out with that seamless transition. You don't have to worry about a shadow root blending out later and seeing a demarcation line. This is the money. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's called the money piece. All right, so you can see how it looks while it's processed. You can see around the hairline there, got the low lights in. We did the other side as well, very similar. I always do the heavy, if there's a side part at all, the heavier side part first. So it has, uh, you can just be a little bit more particular. You can see where I dropped the root in the back and then we take her to the sink for the best part for the clients, right? Lean them back and you'll see here how it takes forever. I work in an older building and it takes forever for the water to warm up. So <laughs> I thought it would be fun for you to see the struggle, hairstylist struggle. Walter making a cameo. And uh, we're gonna get into toning really quick after I start to rinse that. We're gonna shampoo it. I use, uh, currently I'm using Unite shampoo. I love the luxury line. It makes my client's hair feel amazing. I also, if it feels like there's some brassiness, I will use the Blonda shampoo. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> just keeping it real here for you guys oh the best part the scalp massage I just like relax just watching this okay so then we go to the toner and I used can we see it will it go into focus Ta -da! 9p and 9v so she did have I wanted to cool it off 
Her hair is at level six that lifts nicely, but keeps a little bit of warmth. So there you can see with the toner on it, it's starting to look really creamy. I tone at the sink, I flash tone. Every I say like, come at me in the comments if you want, if you disagree with this, but I love it. We ran out of daylight, so it actually is a little cooler than the videos picking up, which bums me out because I'm no videographer, you guys. I do this myself and I'm still learning, as you saw with the, um, with the, uh, the out of focus but look at that seamless color look at that pop around her face look at the difference from the yellow and the orange and like I said like this after video doesn't give it as good of true to tone as it was in real life but getting it from all angles getting that hair look at the hairline it just looks beautiful and then you can see that depth in there that makes that front piece pop oh my gosh I'm obsessed with Leanne's hair it turned out better than I even expected let me know are you gonna try this will you have fun with it how will you make it your own let me know in the comments Okay, thanks for being here, friend. I've got some fun things coming up for you, so don't go away just yet. Okay, what do you think? Aren't you obsessed with Leanne's hair? I can't believe how well it turned out. And like I said, one toner, no shadow root. We got her in and out of here quickly. So you can do this for your clients in under two hours charging your per service price, the, the prices that you should be charging. Now, if you're not sure, maybe you know you've been undercharging or you're not sure what to charge, go ahead and get on the wait list for Rock Your Business down below. It's my signature mentorship program that will help you earn the money you know you're worth in your hair business. All right, friend, hit that like and subscribe. Leave me a comment below. I wanna get connected with you. And if you wanna get a little bit more personal with me, head on over to Instagram and we can be friends over there. Slide into my DMs, let me know you came from YouTube and we will chat over there. All right, have a good week, bye. Having a little, with a, I can't do it. Let's stick to it, let's stay here.